today we're going to be unboxing and setting up this Focus Odin 5 F3 FDM printer. Um, I got this off of Amazon. I'm going to do an unboxing, see how easy it is to set up compared to my Creality Ender 3. Um, do a little test print off of the SD card that comes with it and see how it all works compared to my Creality Ender 3. Um, the main difference on this one is the fact that this has dual Z axis plus this is a direct drive printer. My other printer is a um, yeah, fuck. What I'm going to be going over today is this Focus Odin 5 F3 FDM printer. This is a direct drive dual Z axis printer. Got this off of Amazon. I just figured I'd do a quick unboxing, see how long it takes me to set up, and to do a test print off the SD card that's included. So we'll go ahead and unbox it. Also, this is uh, the main thing about this printer. One of their key points is that it's foldable for easy storage. So you don't always have to have it set up like this in the picture. You can fold this gantry down and store it wherever you want to store it. Um, I use my printers all the time. So it's probably after I do this initial test print, I'm going to print off some parts to do a... Uh, LAC enclosure, the IKEA LAC table enclosure. Um, for this printer, I have a soft enclosure on my other one, but this is not going to be the permanent spot for this as I am going to be getting the LAC enclosure set up for this. Um, today's Easter, so I couldn't go to the store and get parts today, so we're just going to set this up and see how long it takes. Let's get started. This is going to be a weird camera angle. Unfortunately, um, I don't have a lot of room in this apartment that I'm in, so um, but we'll get it, get it all set up and see exactly how long it takes. Supposedly, from what I've been reading on Facebook and other places, um, the Facebook group that I belong to, the Focus Facebook group, says that setup's pretty simple, and uh, there was one guy in there that said he did it in five minutes, so we'll see how long it takes me. I am familiar with 3D printing. Like I said, I do have another printer, so, you know, but, um, not exactly sure how I should unbox this. Let's see how it's set up in here. Um, can't really tell. Looks like I may have it upside down. Looks like the glass bed is on the bottom. So let's, uh, might have to flip this over here. It looks like the bed is down here on this part. So I'm going to go ahead and flip it over and. And see what we got. Don't mind if the cat gets in the way. She's uh she's quite nosy. So I'm gonna try to slide this out as easy as possible. I might just have to sit this on the ground and lift everything up like that. Yeah, that's probably gonna be the easiest way. So, this did come from Amazon, this is where I ordered it from, but we're going to go ahead and unbox this and see what we all got. <laughs> like I said, she's nosy. So what we got first here is Novoria, an accessories box probably going to have tools and you know stuff like that in it and then they actually do include a 0.25 kilogram roll of what looks to be white white PLA yep it's white PLA of course, this is the uh, this is the 1.75 millimeter PLA. Um, the nozzle that I believe that comes with this is the 0.4 millimeter. I'm going to save that white for something else. The test file that I am going to print is I'm going to print the um, hot end cover 
The one that it comes with is yellow, I believe. Um, but they do include it on the SD card, so I figure I'll just print that as like a test print. So I'm not a whole huge fan of yellow, so I'm going to print that in red, I believe is what I'm going to do. So let's see if I can get this all out here. Looks like it's pretty much almost fully assembled, like right in the box. Like I said, it is a, a foldable. So we'll try to get this off here. Of course, we will read the instructions and see how all this is supposed to be done. Okay, so that is going to be the front of the printer. This is the back of the printer. So it looks like the printer is supposed to sit like this, and that looks like it's the hot end. So we will unwrap this uh, plastic here. Grab a knife and cut this plastic off. It looks like it's sitting on the hot end. I don't want to do that. So let's go ahead and remove the plastic. And it looks like, yeah, it looks like it's pretty simple setup. It looks like you just, uh, of course, I am gonna again. I'm gonna read the instructions, but it looks like you just clip up this gantry here, um, plug in a couple things, and that's it. I think you have to secure a couple screws or something right here, but it's pretty much it. I mean, it's pretty much. It's not at all like setting up other printers that I've set up. Other printers, you got to screw in things and all kinds of stuff, but um, you have to put all the other printers I've worked on everything comes separate but this pretty much looks like it's all assembled um, print size on this from what I read is 235 235 250 so we will measure that just to make sure because I believe that is the exact same size as my Ender 3 if I am correct looks bigger in the pictures than what it is um compared to my ender i guess it's about the same size it's the same size as the ender three so let's see what's all in this uh accessories box here this does come with a glass bed that looks to have ultra base on top um which comes with all the the new Ender 3s, basically this to me looks like a competitor to the Ender 3, but upgraded as it does have the direct drive um, and the dual Z axis, which the Ender 3 does not. Um, so yeah, got a quick start guide here. We also have a full user manual. manual. Um, we have, looks to be the ribbon cable. That is for your hot end and your extruder. Um, we have a couple screws, not quite as many as other printers. Um, we do have a power cable, of course. We do have a spool holder. Um, looks like maybe some feet or something, something of that nature. A USB cord. Just in case you need to hook it up to your computer or you can hook it up to, you know, Raspberry Pi or something of that nature. Of course, the old trust, the old trusty scraper. Um, another part of the spool holder. A pair of snips or flush cuts, whatever you want to call them. Um, yeah, those nozzles are completely different than what I'm used to. It's way longer threads on these nozzles. Not exactly sure 
what the replacement nozzles will be like um, if I can just use a standard MK8 or anything of that nature um, if I can just use a standard 0.4 replacement nozzle from you know Amazon or whatever I don't know if I will be able to use the standard nozzles like most printers take um, as the threads on this one are way longer see how long those threads are it's like a, an inch of threads um, on all the other nozzles I've ever used they've only been probably a quarter of that length of thread um, this does come with some tools uh, a couple wrenches a big huge wrench um, and a couple little allen keys also does come with pretty nice actually uh, micro SD card reader um, that's way nicer than some other companies and it comes with looks like one little needle to clean clean out your nozzles with um, looks like there's two extra nozzles I don't know let me see if there's so you get a total of three nozzles as there's one already in the hot end so there's already a nozzle on the hot end you get two extras um, but you know that should get you a, a fair bit of printing done but let's see what the quick start guide says um, but the overall looks it looks like a good quality piece um, like I said direct drive um, extruder the hot end um, I'm gonna test this out for a while before I do try to do any upgrades to it if I did any upgrades at all it just might be a hot end swap but other than that we'll test it out as is and see what we got but let's go over this quick start guide real quick um, inside the quick start guide there is a warranty card warranty card does uh, says please read after service policy part of the user manual carefully and provide us with the following information just ask for product name order number where did you buy it describe the reason for the warranty um, just a little warranty card here from focus it's a weird way to spell in focus but that's how I was told it was pronounced F O K O O S so let me close my razor knife here just so I don't cut myself or anything like that so it says first to straighten the machine out and then fold up the gantry like I did and it doesn't tell you exactly what to do it just says straighten the machine install the material rack insert FFC flexible flat cable um, check if the screws at the extruder hotbed belt are loose tighten them um, not on the pulley under the extruder Oh, eccentric nut okay I see what that is nuts on pulley pulleys under the hotbed okay oh, same thing eccentric eccentric nuts um, screws on the belt make sure all that's tight which I will do then of course you do your bed leveling that's pretty much it like I said it looks like a pretty easy setup um, let's see if they go into any further information in the actual user manual like if they tell you the size of things any of that nature um, directions before use it's just a quick little thank you for purchase instructions and video tutorials on the SD card that's cool so they actually do have um, video tutorials that you can watch I'm not gonna watch those um, maybe I will after I do this unboxing video and set up maybe I will take a peek at them and you know see if I missed anything uh, gives you the focus official website points for attention when using the machine please make sure that the ambient temperature is between 5 and 38 degrees Celsius and humidity is 20% to 80% RH otherwise the machine may not print normally machine cannot be placed in uneven humid dusty environment because it will affect the service life of the machine resulting in rust fan rotation and other phenomena Phen yeah phenomena yeah that's what it says okay 
Do not touch the moving parts with your hands to avoid being pinched. Basic, you know, um, for adults, basic common knowledge. Now, if this was a kid, you know, of course you want to go over it with your kids or whatever. Here's the parameters of the machine. It's all metal. Uh, structure material, machine size, length is 410 millimeters, width 421, height 450. Machine weight is 7.74 kilograms. Packing size, the length is 585 millimeters, width is 231, height is 483. Packing weight, 10.1 kilograms. Maximum platform temperature is 120 degrees Celsius. Platform material, lattice glass tempered. Maximum nozzle temp, 260. Nozzle diameter, 0.4. Number of nozzles, single nozzle. Electric power parameters. Now you do want to make sure that your power is set to the proper thing. There is a spot on the bottom of the machine. US, of course, you're going to do the 110 volt. Anywhere else, I believe, is the uh, 220. Uh, electric power parameters, DC 24 volt, 240 watts. Input voltage, AC 110 or AC 220. Control panel, 3.5 inch color LCD touch. Uh, environmental requirements, again, type of printing technology. Print size, I was correct. Print size is 235 by 235 by 250. High precision, XY, okay, just basic perimeters. Precision materials that you can print are TPU, PLA, ABS, PET G, and Woody material. Um, TF card, memory card printing, USB online printing. So again, you can, of course, it does not come with Wi Fi, but you can hook up a uh, Raspberry Pi, anything like that. Use Octoprint, that sort of thing. It does tell you what's included in this pamphlet here. It does tell you machine mainframe, uh, 250 grams of filament, random colors. So you might not necessarily get white. You might get a, a separate color. Material rack, material rock, rack rod. They call the scraper a shovel. Scissors, which is your flush cuts, flat cable. Power cord, USB 2.0 cable. Uh, Would have been nice if it was like USB 3, but two will do just fine toolkit two extra nozzles t nuts m4 times three standard protection cap those were those two extra black things i'll have to see where those actually go um stuff i've already gone over machine instruction just basically x-axis motor y-axis where screws need to be installed okay So S is where screws need to be installed. Screws just need to be installed. It looks like there's a total of four, which is going to be two on each side of the gantry. So two in the front, two in the back, two in the front, two in the back. And then it says, you know, assemble the 3D printer. Okay, so it does give you pretty much full on written instructions, basic settings of the machine. Tells you all that in the whole user manual. Start printing, of course, tells you how to level your bed with doing the paper method. Um, this does not come with a BL Touch. Um, I may purchase one in the future for this machine. I do have one on my other. Um, it does come with also the Focus Slicer, which is based on a version of Cura. It's not the complete version of Cura, from my understanding. It's just basically like how Creality does theirs, but this is focus versions. Uh, please follow the steps to set up focus slicer. This will only take a few minutes, install focus slicer. So you can use focus, but according to the Facebook group, people have been using Simplify 3D, full version of Cura, and even the Prusa slicer. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. It tells you basically how to, basically if you didn't know anything about printing, everything is pretty much outlined in this manual except for of course uh this isn't going to tell you how to design 3d stuff um this is just all about printing so this tells you how to print it once it's designed 
So we will go ahead and um, let me see what screws are supposed to go where. See if it tells you in this this book of uh, or this little packet of screws rather. Let's see what this all says. Hexagon socket flathead screw M48. There's three in this pack. Three of those T nuts, and then M5. Does it say there's eight in here? Uh, M5 times eight. It says M5 times eight, but there's only five screws in here. So. Uh, let's try to see what screws go where. Like I said, it did not outline that in a quick start manual. It just said that. Okay, assemble the printer. First, take out the main body. I mean, if I was not doing a review or unboxing on this, then I'm sure I could get this done relatively quick, like that guy said. Take out four of the M5 by five screws and wrenches from the toolbox and stand the print head 90 degrees the screw the screws in position with four holes in total also maybe there is only i didn't really take a good look at this so yeah there is only my bad i apologize for that there's you only need to install four screws not the eight, like I said, so looks like, yeah, there's a spot for four. Okay. So the M five by fives. Okay. So we're going to take out these right here. Also, the tools. Again, guys, I apologize for the view. It's kind of... Let's see what we got here. Let's go ahead and lay these out. Take them out of the bag. Let's see which one fits what. Okay, this looks like it is correct. Make sure you get it lined up right. I'm just going to get them finger tight for right now until I get them all in there. But for what you get for the price of this, um, the price I believe right now on Amazon is right at 300 bucks. Um, you might be able, every once in a while I have seen they ran like a coupon on it or something for maybe like 25 bucks off or something, but you have to double check that. But, um, yeah, for what you get for 300 bucks, I mean, yeah, it's, it's definitely worth it from what I see. I mean, not very many printers for that price range are going to come with direct drive and dual Z axis. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, the, the print size, the 235 by 235 by 250. Um, excuse me, guys, when I'm just assembling this, I know you're probably looking at my back, but um, for the the print size, the 235 by 235 by 250, um, you know, 
I would like it to be a little bit larger than that because that's what my other same size as my other printer, but my other printer does not have direct drive, so I can't print TPU with my other printer. My uh, other printer does not have dual Z axis. I have done some upgrades to it, but it doesn't. For what I have in that other printer, I, I pretty much have maybe a little bit more than 300 in the other printer, but I still don't have dual Z axis and I don't have direct drive. Um, so, yeah, definitely for what you get, it's definitely worth the money from what I can tell. Um, but it's supposed to be, you know, pretty user friendly, pretty much set up in under 10 minutes and print. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely worth it. The build quality is worth it. Um, it came pretty quick. Uh, I did order it from Amazon, like I said. It took um, it took one day longer than what they said on Amazon. It was supposed to arrive on Friday. Um, it arrived yesterday. So it was like one day longer, but, you know, I mean, it is what it is. It is the holiday. I do understand that. So, you know, being Easter and all, sometimes it's going to take a day longer, a day maybe two, but whatever. I'm going to go ahead and tighten these now. I'm just going to tighten them to the point. I don't want to, I don't, I'm not going to over tighten them, but. I don't want it coming loose, so let's go ahead and tighten these. So, while I'm doing this, the, the question to myself when I bought this was that my main reason for getting it was for the direct drive and the dual Z axis. I printed a lot of lithophanes, so having a dual Z axis comes in handy with lithophanes just because of the height of them, you know, and stuff can get wobbly wobbly so you know i uh i got it for that reason plus um i've kept upgrading 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 the other printer and i didn't want to sink more money into it and i seen this one come up and like i said it caught my attention um so here we are all right, let me go to the next step. I'm going to follow the user manual, not the express guide, just because I want to make sure I get everything. Install the material rack. Okay, take that out of the toolbox. Okay, set M4 and T-shape nut on the rear end of material rack. Do not tighten the nut. Please refer to picture. Okay, gotcha. Install, okay. Face the same side as the print head okay so they want you to basically what we're going to do is we're going to take these spool holders are pretty common um they pretty much look the same on on every machine from what i can tell of course i will print my end up printing my own spool holder but um, let's see, make sure I'm doing this right. I think you just put it in there and twist it like so. Yeah, combine, okay. Yeah, basically just do that. Okay, then you're going to take...
It's like two of these T-shaped. Two of these and two of the other sides of the screw, the M4s. Yeah, so it pretty much comes all assembled, minus the minus um, four screws for the gantry and minus the spool holder. Everything's already assembled for you, which is pretty nice. So, I believe there's two sides to this T-nut. There's like a grip side and then there's like a a more rounded off side so pretty sure what you want to do is doesn't really show you but we're gonna go with the uh, the grippy side towards the bottom of the spool holder so basically what you do just like this Let's see what I'm doing here just like this just total of two of them and then the way these work is is once you slide them into the track on top of the on top of the gantry so you want to put it on the same side um, I guess it doesn't really matter you can put to the left or to the right it, or in the middle it doesn't really say it just says you know I guess it shows it right in the middle okay so it shows it right in the middle so what we're gonna do is you just set them on top if you set them long ways, they will just pretty much slide into the track. And then you're going to take the proper Allen key, which that's not it either. Take the proper Allen key and just tighten them up and they will turn. Once they get tight enough, they will turn the opposite way. The nuts will, and it grips onto the, uh, to the bottom of the rail here. So, like I said, by by the focus group on Facebook and in their description, can you set this up in under 10 minutes and start printing? Yes, without a doubt. I'm taking longer just because I'm explaining everything to you guys and I'm double checking everything and making sure everything is 100% tight and ready to go before I start printing. Um, again, like I said, you could, if I wasn't talking to you guys and all this other stuff and reading books and all that other stuff, can you just look at it and set it up? Sure can. No problem. 100%. You could go right off the, the quick start guide, set everything up, and you're good to go. Um, Okay, did all that. This just goes basic settings in the machine. Tells you how to start leveling, all that other good stuff. Now my only question is, is I do have, it does not. So let me take this back here, guys. So um, assembling the printer. Okay, take machine out. Damaging the print head, screws, okay, blah, 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 blah. In the, in the manual, it says machine introduction. There is material, rack and spool holder, ribbon kill, print head, 
apex axis belt adjuster, Z proximity switch, lattice glass. It does not tell you. It does not tell you where these uh, cap protectors go. So it doesn't tell you this. So that would be one recommendation. It says stand protection cap two, um, but it doesn't tell you where they go. It does not tell you in this manual, uh, but I'm assuming they go on the end. Uh, they are the size basically of this top gantry. It looks like they're just um, little caps that go on the end. I know that because, again, assembling other printers. Um, so, but would you know that unless you have already previously installed or built another printer? Possibly not. So you would, you probably would want to, they probably show you that in the instruction, instruction videos, um, which I did not watch. I will watch after I'm done with the assembly. Um, I will watch to double check, like I said, everything. I just wanted to do an unboxing and a quick start for you guys. So you probably do want to sit down and actually watch those video tutorials if this is your first printer. If this is your first printer and okay, it does show in the in the quick setup guide, it shows you how to install the cable and how to tighten the nuts and stuff like that. Um, but again, it doesn't show you where those caps go. But the only place they obviously fit is on the end here of the top rail on the gantry so um that's pretty much it for the screws i think that you get one extra of each screw so you only need four they give you five of this one um the other one you only need two of they give you three same thing with the nut so that's it on those um It looks like, okay, let's see here. Looks like there's a cable, oh, that cable's already hooked up, but that cable looks like it's not, so let's see. Uh, yep, insert the cable. So, okay, I got to, I have to cut these uh, zip ties off. So give me one moment here and cut off these zip ties because you have the, of course, you can't have the zip tie in a way because your rollers won't move back and forth. scissors are trash uh, you know what why don't we use the uh, the flush cuts it came with if I can find what I just did with them they are right here take these flush cuts and cut that zip tie take this did that just go? That's right there, okay. I like how also on this one that the most power supplies on other units are on the side. So this one being right on the bottom is comes in it's pretty nice as well. Um, there's a couple other zip ties that you have to cut off here. Uh, of course, take off the padding behind your uh, Z-axis screws. Take that off. Um, 
don't know if I should cut off that zip tie as well. I'm assuming yes. Um, also, this Z, uh, yeah, the dual Z, you got to plug that in. So mine was not plugged in. Maybe they do come plugged in on some, but mine was not on this one. Um, let me also spin this around and check. I have other zip ties just in case I need to re zip tie this, but I'm going to go ahead and cut it off because it's not too often. Unless it's there to keep the ribbon cable. That's the only reason I could see that would be there, is maybe keep the ribbon cable. Um. Yeah, that's probably what that's there for. I'm going to go ahead and leave that. Otherwise, this cable is going to be flopping all over the place. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that. So do not, on the left-hand side of your machine, on the Z-axis, the uh, zip tie that's holding your ribbon cable to the gantry, do not remove that. Um, that's going to keep your ribbon cable in place. Alright, we got one slight problem here. Why is that going crooked? Okay, on your your hot end, this ribbon cable is going to plug in into the side. There's nothing that snaps in place, but the ribbon cable you just push in there and you kind of feel it click into place. So there's that. This looks like it is already in place. I'm not sure. This is, is this just an extra ribbon cable? I'll take this out of the bag and look at it because there's already cables. You have a cable on this side that is already in place. Okay, so here we go. This ribbon cable, you need to connect as well. So it just... It doesn't open or anything that it looks like. You just snap it in place. Again, I'm sure all these are on the instruction video. So yeah, you have to connect that on the left hand side and then you're going to connect the one into your hot end, the hot end feels like it moves pretty smoothly. 
Um, the Z axis, I was moving by hand so I could get that cable because it was kind of stuck behind the X. So now that that's all done, um, I'm assuming that this cable is just an extra. Uh, I will look in the manual real quick to see if it's just an extra cable or what the deal is. Let's see when it comes to the parts list, if it says extra cable with it. Yeah, it says flat cable times one, so I'm assuming that's an extra because all the cables are plugged in. So that cable's plugged in, that cable's plugged in. All I've got to do is plug in my power cable, uh, make sure it's set to... US should automatically be set to 110 volts. Um, so I'll make sure that that is correct, and I will get some filament on here. Um turn the power on, we'll do the bed leveling. I know this is a longer video than most, but I wanted to go over everything with you and just let everybody know um, what exactly the deal was. Um, so again, yes, you can set this up in under 10 minutes. There's an SD slot on the side and the, uh, the port for your USB is on. If you're looking at the machine, it'll be on the right-hand side of the machine. Uh, I'll plug in that cable. Power switch on the back. I'm going to flip this, or rotate this, rather, onto its side because th there is a button. If you look... Lay that down gently. I was told um, that there is supposed to be a switch. Uh, let me see if I got a flashlight or something to look in here. I was told that there is a There we go. Or maybe it's on the side because I'm not seeing anything on the bottom. Let's pick this back up and rotate it to the other side here or on the back maybe. Nope, the back's just a fan. Yep, there it is. Okay, so it's on the left-hand side of the machine. Is going to be your switch to turn it from 110 to 220. This, but let's see, I'm trying to read it here. It doesn't tell you. trying to see if it's if it tells you which way is which and on my machine well we're just going to hope for the best because on my machine on my printer here it does not tell me doesn't have it clearly labeled which way to click it for 110 and which way to click it for 220 I'm hoping this being in the US it should automatically come set to 110 I'm gonna hope so because I don't want to fry this machine but there is not anywhere labeled clearly what which way is which there is a sticker right here but I can't tell what it says okay so it says oh. 
115, 230, selected by switch before power before power please check okay well unfortunately that's what it says but it doesn't tell me which way is which let's see if I just uh Let's see if I move it, if anything happens, see which. I'm just going to take one of these uh, Allen keys. And see if any, I don't have it plugged into power, but I'm going to see if anything. So I moved it that way towards the back. It was towards the front. But let me see if there's no markings that tell you which way is which, from what I can tell, unfortunately. So okay, okay, okay. So here we go. You have to flip it on up upright to see which way is which. So if the switch is towards the front of the machine, it's 110, towards the back of the machine, 220. So I want to put it back so it's towards the front of the machine. So it is correct by default for the United States. If it's, I'm sure if it's shipped in your country, um, depending on where you are, it should be set to the proper, proper voltage by default. Yep, that's towards the back. It's kind of hard to get to. That's towards the front. Okay. Now let's let's go over the bed leveling and all that other good stuff. Again, I apologize for the long video, but I'm sure all this is included in their video, but I wanted to do a full, thorough unboxing setup. Um, that way you know what to expect when getting yours. I've seen a couple videos out here for this printer, but I have yet to see one that you know, goes pretty much step by step. I've seen everybody unbox it, just set it up and test print. I haven't seen anyone really truly explain yet. Maybe there is a couple videos out there, maybe there's not. But I'm gonna go ahead and peel off the screen protector here. Also on your glass bed, there's these clips. Um, there is, looks to be so you're gonna have one on the front. You don't have any on the left hand side. I'm gonna look at other pictures. And again, I'll go look at that video to make sure that um, everything is where it's supposed to be. I am going to make sure everything's tight where it should be. These clips are nice. Um, I like these clips better than some of those, um, I don't know, I think they call them paper clips or something. You get them at Dollar General and you can, like if you have a regular, uh, Ender 3 or some other brand of printer, if you're doing a glass bed upgrade, you can just, uh, you buy those clips that will allow you to put the bed on. These are way better. I like I like this design way better. That way you don't have those big metal flappy things hanging out all over the place. So we will secure. And they work they're pretty stable too. They don't once they're on here, 
it's almost like the bed don't want to move um but again i checked those nuts on the x-axis I don't feel any binding and it's not too loose um, I already moved these ones up and down they feel pretty smooth if I need to adjust them later on I will um, and then all I'm doing is making sure that the bearings are actually rolling that there is no hesitation or hold up um, no binding on the y-axis here okay so those ones aren't moving smoothly looks like like I said looks like everything's pretty much set up out of the box you just gotta put these couple screws in put these end caps on and assemble your spool holder that's it so um, there's a video out there of a guy that did it in five minutes and yeah i mean if i wasn't going over everything looking cranny i'm pretty sure i could have done this in five minutes too probably maybe even a little bit quicker than five minutes like i said it's pretty pretty straightforward um it's pretty much everything's already assembled for you i think they could have been a little bit more clear on the written instructions um but of course like i said if this is going to be your first printer you're going to take that time and make sure everything is right um, from what i can tell all the nuts are tight um double check these ones on the on the dual z motors make sure those ones are tight but other than that the belt's tight belt's good to go um yeah everything's pretty much assembled and good to go so i'm going to turn this on and level the bed i'll show you guys how to do that if you've never done it before it's pretty simple um sometimes it can be very frustrating on leveling the bed um but again like i said for this printer coming out of the box ready to go this is the best one i've seen i would definitely recommend this to anybody interested in getting their first printer this like i said it's uh you don't get much more easier than this i apologize for you guys having to look at my back and my shoulders and stuff um, i just turned the printer on it is booting um doesn't take very long to brute um initial menu you got a tool settings auto load printing auto load what's that's going to do is just going to extrude your fulfillment a little bit um but i'm going to go back to the manual here and we're going to follow their instructions um so basic settings of the machine we're going to go into settings so we'll touch that uh language choose your language of course i'm english mine's already set to english um next temperature tool preheat you click click the three to he heat the nozzle or bed so you can preheat i'm sure let's see let's go back um it says wi-fi but i don't believe this has wi-fi settings watch out oreo we'll click on it anyway the Wi-Fi module is being configured. Please wait a moment. I mean, if this comes, I was told it did not come with Wi-Fi. Does not come with a Wi-Fi module. Maybe you can install one. But the firmware obviously already has it configured. As if a Wi-Fi module was installed. I'm just going to give it a couple moments here. It says... It says that the module is being configured, but I don't believe there is one already installed. From what I was told, there is not. There is not a Wi-Fi module already in this printer. It shouldn't be taking this long if there was. It did not give me the option to 
um, did not give me the option to uh, put in my own Wi-Fi settings or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and click cancel. Um, so under your settings, you get a Wi-Fi, fan, about, uh, continue. Let's see what this continue one is. No files found. Oh, that's basically, okay, so if you pause the print, you can continue it, come back to it. Machine settings. It's basically your machine, machine type, machine size, home direction, end stop type. Filament settings, level settings. So let's click on filament here. Um, load temperature, 200 by default. Load speed, 200. Load length, 50. Unload temperature, 200. Okay. So you could change these default settings if you wanted to. Unload speed, unload length, that sort of thing. Sorry, I got my cat here. She's uh, likes to chew on stupid stuff. So we'll go back, back here, level settings, back. So level level settings, what that is, uh, enable auto leveling, no. If you had a BL touch, oh, it says enable BL touch, yes. There, I need to turn that off because there is no BL touch enable, uh, installed in this. Uh, probe connector, Z max, probe Z axis. Basically what that is, is if you had a BL touch installed, Basically, that is an auto leveling sensor that you can purchase separately. Uh, manual leveling coordinate settings. That's basically tells you what points of the bed the the nozzle will go to in order to um, level your machine. There's a uh, option on here that will automatically automatically moves the hot end for you um, to level your bed. So back to the manual here. Um, it, I'm going to level this first. Um, usually I level with my bed and my nozzle up to temperature. So I'm going to follow what they say in here. Um, I'm going to go to tool. So let me go back here. I'm going to go to tool. And I'm going to click on preheat. Um, so extrusion one, close back. So we're going to go hotbed extrusion, hotbed extrusion. Does it, it doesn't give me the option to do both. Uh, let's see, preheat. Now let's go back, back, tools, go preheat. Oh, this is, this takes you down negative. Okay, uh, let's see what this does. That goes 1, 5, and 10 degrees Celsius. So, your hotbed. Basically, this is a preheat. There's no nothing set in here to automatically preheat the PLA or PETG or TPU. You have to do it all manually. I'm sure you can probably do it in your firmware to where you can set that up. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and preheat my bed to 60 degrees for PLA. And my extrusion, I'm going to go ahead and set that to 200 degrees Celsius. And go ahead and let that get up to temperature. Um, go back on that. And then it tells you return to zero, reset tool, home, select, all return to... Okay, so tool, we're going to go home, home all. What that will do will home all your axis. So it will home the X, Y, and Z. Um, it's kind of slow on homing, but again, if you know Marlin, which is the firmware that these printers run on, you can adjust all that in your settings if you decide to do so. This is just all factory right out of the box. So we're going to go with what it select all return or specify access. Click forward to turn off the motor. Okay. Um, start printing. Step one leveling to reset the machine. Click home at first and click all. After resetting, click leveling to conduct five point auxiliary leveling. 
At each auxiliary leveling point, adjust the horizontal be height between the print head and the platform by rotating the four nuts under the printing platform. Adjust the printing platform to keep a distance of 0 to 0 0.1 millimeter from the print head as shown in figure 1-3. So it is shown in the box. Basically what you want to do is you want to take a... Um, basically what you want to do is you want to take a piece of printer paper. Um, just cut your little square or whatever you want to do. Average printer paper will, will work fine. Just cut a little square printer paper like so. Um, let's go back here to the main menu. Uh, let's see settings. Nozzle settings. Maximum temperature 275. PID thermostat. Okay, okay, back, back. So again, this is all basically right out of the box. Auto shutdown after print. No. Has UPS power supply. No. Z settings. You can. Uh, Z2 enable, Z2 in stop enable, no Z2 connector, Z max. Um, I'll have to dig into further to this to find out what all that stuff means. Again, I will watch these videos, but I want to show you guys what the current procedure looks like real fast. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, make sure that my machine is up to temperature. Um, let's see. That was pretty fast. My uh, hot end is at 199, right under 200. Um, my hot bed is at 60. So what we will do is we will go back, um, more back. So from the tool menu, you can click leveling, um, and it will give you five points. It will give you every corner and then the center. So um, it basically gives you the two front corners then the two back corners and then the center so we will click one so what that will do is what it will take me to the uh, first leveling point what you want to do is you want to take a piece of paper here like so and what you want to do is you want to Um, adjust the nut at the bottom you want to lose it depending on if your bed is too close or too far is which way you're going to turn your nut um, I am loosening mine right now to raise the bed because my bed is way too far away from my nozzle here and I mean way too far so I'm probably gonna want to go ahead and loosen these ones as well loosen the other front one as well because they pretty much balance each other out um, yeah let's Let's tighten this one back up a little bit. Let's loosen this one. Yeah, it was a long ways away. Basically what you want to do is you want to feel the nozzle kind of drag. 
you don't want it too tight but you don't want it too loose either you want it to kind of drag your paper which is what that's doing right there I could probably tighten it up just a hair all right there we go on that one it's quick spot number two Again, I like I prefer to do this when it's hot. So this one I got too close. All right. And I'll go back around and double check all these as well. Move to the next one. I know this is a long video, but whatever. I'll film a shorter one too, just for the people that don't want to sit through all this. I'll loosen this up. I'll tighten that up because I loosened it too far. I'm going to go ahead and loosen this one up as well. Make sure you're doing this with a clean, clean edge piece of paper. All right, that's dragging pretty good. Click on the next one. You don't want it to crash into your bed, and you don't want it so tight to where you can't pull the paper out, but you want it tight enough to where it's dragging on your on your paper. So. Make sure you're turning them up the proper way. check the middle here if all is good the middle you sh there's nothing to adjust in the middle there's only four nuts so the middle should be as long as your bed is okay now that's a little bit too close so I'm gonna go around again and loosen these up just a tad you don't want your paper to bunch up when you're sliding it underneath there and you don't want it loose to the point where you can just easily slide your paper out so you want it's it's pretty much my feel thing so like see that that's way too loose because i adjusted the other ones so now what i'm going to do i have to adjust this again you don't have to adjust this far this time This is where having an auto level comes in handy, but printers that come with true auto leveling systems are way more expensive than this. All right, that feels pretty good there. Go to the next. See, like this one's too tight. I can't slide my paper underneath there. See, my paper is stopping. So.
That's good there. Machine is very quiet. The drivers, the stepper motor drivers, everything on this is quiet. Um, the only thing you really hear running is the fan. This one again back here is too tight. Be careful not to burn yourself while doing this. The reason I do it with with everything already up to temperature is because that way everything's already expanded. Um, it's going to be a true level, should be anyways. So, this one back here is too tight. See, by adjusting one, it, it pretty much adjusts the other others as well. Feels good there. Check the middle. I will go around a third time in the opposite direction. Just to double check everything one last time. See that is too loose. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start up here. Go back to the one where we were just at. I'm gonna have to do this a couple more times just to make sure I get it completely. It's good there. That's too loose. It's tighter than I like it. So one more time here. Should have it. Should have it complete. Should we start with number four again? It's a little bit too tight. Too loose.
we're gonna run with that as a test print so let's go back I'm gonna move I move my Z up that way I can load my filament here and you want your filament when you load it to come out in a nice straight line so I'm gonna load I'm gonna raise my Z axis up here a little bit so you guys can see what that filament looks like when it's coming out I'm going to use my own filament I'm not going to use the one that came with the printer um, because I want to print that test file that basically what it is is it's this cover right here and this cover over here I'm gonna print those in red um, I mean the yellow doesn't look bad but I want to play print it in red because it is a hot end so uh, I just think you know kind of makes sense to me print it in red whatever so what I'm gonna do is take my filament here I'm gonna cut it kind of at a angle I'm going to take my filament So on a spool holder, it tells you when loading consumables, you need to press them until they fully enter. So basically, um, you just, there's a hole on the side, right here by the plug. You just feed it through until they fully enter. And what you can do is you can go back, extrusion. Um, extrusion speed it's normal when extrude 10 millimeters we're gonna hit the down arrow why is that not extruding it should be extruding Okay, it's in there it's not coming back out so just keep hitting it extrude a couple times it should be extruding and it's not so it's in there it's not coming out but I'll click the out button there it goes it came out Doesn't say that I have to pinch or hold anything. Just says I'm gonna cut a little bit of this off. This is an older roll that I've had sitting here, so cut some of this off. And... There we go, that's a lot better. All right, so what you want is you want, when you extrude this, you want it to come out in a nice straight line. Well, there, 
filament already in here or something? Maybe they had something. Oh, there we go. Yeah, let me take us back down to speed. So what you want is you want a nice straight. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit on this. So you want a nice straight line of filament coming out. Straight line, just like that. So again, there's other settings that I'll probably have to go back in here and adjust um, further on down the line, but I'm going to do this test print real quick. Make sure it sticks to the bed and make sure everything's printing. And I'll go watch the videos and leave you guys for the next time. So let me... Uh, Take us SD card reader out of this SD slot. It does not tell you what the size of the SD card is. Um, I will put it in uh, in my computer and let you know, but I know there's some test files on here. So input the card print system volume in let's see g code choose file test model so that is doesn't exactly say what it is set this one no files found okay no files found i'm sure what it's going to be is probably that one yep that's this is probably all the videos so any of the those files or G code. Okay, so G code. If you click on G code, you get the air guide. Um, you got your fan hood, which the fan hood is what I'm about to print, which is going to be this thing. Um, you can print a cat, a little benchy, which is like a little uh, tugboat looking thing. There's a, and then you got an owl, another owl, a couple owls together, a vase. There's quite a few things on here. Um, protective cover, which looks like that might be another, another cover that you can print. And that's it. There's also a Pikachu on here as well. Um, I'm going to print this fan hood first. So I'll just click on that. Um, print this model, G code, fan hood, G code, confirm. And it will actually display, um, let's see here. See if I can back this up. It actually shows you on the screen an image of what it's about to print. So should be auto homing now. We'll auto home. As long as your bed is level, everything should stick fine. Um, another trick, though, is if you do need to, if you are having problems even after your bed is level with adhesion, you can always use um, hairspray or uh, purple glue sticks, or I like to use the um, Vision Miner Nano Adhesive polymer nano polymer adhesive rather um, is what they call it you can get a sample bottle of it pretty cheap but um, looks like the test print is going I'm not exactly sure what the speeds are that it's printing at um, tells me that the nozzle is at 210 I'm probably gonna click on the option uh, I'm gonna click on Temperature. Um, my, I like to print this PLA at 200. So I'm going to leave, leave that at 200. And we'll go back, back. 210 on this PLA is a little bit too hot. 
but there you go guys it is printing um it is printing i'm not exactly sure what the speeds are it doesn't tell you it just gives you an image let's see what the speeds are no it doesn't tell you it just It looks to be everything seems to be adhesion looks good yeah I will let this print the first layer make sure all the adhesion is good and that will be my out-of-the-box assembly and test print that I will leave you guys with. I will probably do another quick video that way, you know, if anybody will, anybody else wants to watch just a quick little test print video or whatever, I will do that as well. But there you guys have it. Um, showed you basically what you needed to do. That's it. Can you do this in under five minutes set up? Sure. All you got to do is plug it into two cables, tighten a total of six screws, level it. Might take you a little bit longer, five minutes, maybe five, ten minutes. But, yeah, it's good to go. This is probably the best out-of-the-box, um, ready-to-go printer that I've seen today. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Happy printing.